<laughs> G'day, I'm Jake from Make Science Fun. Unless you're a student of mine, and then I'm Mr. Strickling, of course. But anyway, thanks for joining me today on this first of my weekly vlogs. Yes, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do some video logging. <laughs> uh, let's see how we go. Uh, so throughout the week of teaching, I'm going to like film some of the highlights of what I've done throughout my teaching week. Um, some of the great pracs, some of the great concepts and that sort of thing. And, you know, some of the science I do on the weekend. Now, I've had, you know, this channel make science fun for almost four years now, and it's going well. Uh, 26,000 subs, thanks very much um, for your, all your support. Uh, almost 10 million views, which is awesome. And, you know, I, I love making content. I love making good, positive content for, you know, the World Wide Web. Um, I love making fun science stuff. I love doing fun science projects with my kids. Uh, sort of engineering projects or science projects, you know, anything to do with hands-on. I love hands-on practical stuff. And, you know, I also want to grow the channel. Uh, I want to share my love of science, my passion with science with as many people as possible. And so I think the best way to help, you know, me share is to actually share, share a bit more, share a bit more of myself, which I haven't really done a lot in the channel. And so that's why I've got this vlog um, kicking off now. Uh, I've got, got some goals as well. I'm currently at 26,000 subs and I'm hoping uh, that within a year I can grow that to um, 100,000. So yes, it's a, it's a big goal, it's an ambitious goal. Um, I've got 10 million views at the moment and my goal is to get 50 million views. So <laughs> uh, within a year, so that's a lot. Um, and so I need some help. If you want to help, uh, the best way that you can help a YouTuber is to actually interact with the video. So like it, like it, dislike it, leave a comment, respond to other people's comment. Uh, the more interaction with the videos, the better it is for the YouTuber because, you know, YouTube analytics, they put it further up the lists and, you know, on recommended pages and stuff like that. So please interact. I try and uh, respond to all comments. Um, so I, I do love it when people leave comments, positive, negative. Um, now this is a safe channel. This is a family orientated channel. So don't, don't leave swearing stuff and that sort of stuff. It will just get like, we probably won't even get like accepted. We'll be blocked or we'll get deleted or something like that. So it's family safe. This is a family safe channel. You can let your kids, if you if you've got kids, of course, just, you know, troll through make science fun. There won't be any problems at all. Um, and if you're a kid and you're looking for like naughty stuff, well, go, go find another channel because this, this channel won't satisfy you, unfortunately. But if you love science, if you love science, if you've got a passion for science, you definitely have to um, check out Make Science Fun. Um, you know, I will still do my regular Friday upload, you know, where I do some science project, science lesson, engineering project with my kids, you know. Every Friday, I'll definitely still do the normal upload, which I've done for every Friday for the last four years. But on Sunday, I'm now aiming to do a vlog every week. So, let's go. So, it's Monday. I've just had a year 12 physics class, and we're currently looking at... Oh, <laughs> Faraday's law of induction and Lenz's law. Now, Faraday's law of induction is basically, if you have like a copper, uh, a, a coil of copper wire like I've got here, this has probably got something like um, 500 turns, something like that. Um, the wire goes around like that. It's enameled wire, it's insulated wire so that the electricity, whatever electricity is produced has to go around in a circle. Um, and I've got it connected, each end of the, the coil connected to a galvan, galvanometer. It's a very sensitive um, device that measures current, and so it can measure small amounts of current. And so I've got a magnet here. This is just a permanent magnet. It's a bar magnet. It's a bit of an old cheapo. It's not particularly strong. But if I bring it into the coil of wire, you can see I induce a current. I can induce the current in this coil of wire, and you can see Oh, when I pull it out, the current goes the other way. I go in one way, the current goes one way, I pull it out, the current goes the other way. Now, if there's a change of magnetic flux, now magnetic flux is just the flow of um, magnetic field lines. If there's a change of magnetic flux through a coil of wire, then Faraday says that you induce 
a current or a voltage really and an induced voltage will actually produce a current if you've got a closed circuit. Now what about if there's a stronger magnetic field? There's a stronger magnetic field so I'm going to add to it like some super magnets. I'll put it in at the same speed. Whoa! Can you see how much, how much further the meter went? So I've produced a much bigger current because I've got a much stronger magnetic field. Also Faraday said that if, you, if, the, if the flux changes more rapidly, if the flux changes more rapidly, you'll get a bigger voltage induced. So let's have a look. If I go in quickly, choop, come out quickly. So I go in quick, goes almost all the way. What about if I go slowly? Only goes to 50. Whoop. What about if I go quick? Almost goes to like 75 or something like that. Um, what about if I reverse the magnet? So I go in with the North Pole this way. What about if I reverse the magnet and go in with the South Pole? The current goes the other way. And that's because of Lenz's law. Lenz's law says that when a current or a current is induced, the current goes in such a direction to oppose the change that caused it. And so I've got, a, I've got some electricity flowing in this coil and that electricity will produce a magnetic field and Lenz's law says that the magnetic field will oppose the change that caused it. And so when I bring in a North Pole, this current will produce a magnetic field that will oppose the north of the magnet. And so it will actually be a north magnetic field opposing that. Um, when I bring in the south pole, then it will actually have to go the other way to produce a south pole to repel that. So, Year 12 Physics Lesson 1. Year 11 Physics, we're looking at something called kinematics, and that is the study of motion without, dis without actually describing what causes the motion. And we're looking at the three equations of motion at the moment. Uh, v equals u plus at, s equals ut plus half at squared, and v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Uh, v is the final velocity of an object, u is the initial, a is the acceleration, and t is the time that we're interested in. Now, the key with these three equations is that they assume that acceleration is constant. Um, and typically, if it's to do with falling objects, the acceleration is going to be 9.8 metres per second per second. I went outside with the students and they had to throw a ball as hard as they could up into the air. And so they stood here, and so one of them, one student threw it, and then the other student uh, timed how long it took to go up and then to come down. And so they got a total time. Total, a total time, and you know, one, one, one group, one student got uh, 4.2 seconds. What they could then solve is how fast did they actually throw the ball and how high did it go. Now, at the, at the top of the motion, we could actually split this motion into two because in the absence of air friction, it takes the same time to go up as it takes to come down. So we could actually split this motion in two and say that the time to go up is actually equal to 2.1 seconds the initial velocity up is, um, we don't know, that's what we're going to calculate. The acceleration is equal to, well, in this case, I'm going to say that up is actually positive, and that, that means the acceleration is down, um, which has got a minus 9.8 meters per second per second, and we're trying to find the height as well. One thing that we do know is that at the very top of the flight, the final velocity is zero. So up here at the top of the flight, the final velocity is zero. The question I ask my students is, what's the acceleration at the top of the flight? And most students go, oh well, it, it stops at the top and so the acceleration is zero. Well, if the acceleration is zero and it's not moving, that means the ball's gonna actually stay there um, at that height, which clearly it doesn't do. The acceleration is always down, it's always 9.8 meters per second per second, because the earth is pulling it down the entire trip. So even when the ball is going up, it's accelerating down. When it's coming down, it's accelerating down. <laughs> that causes it to slow down as it's going up and speed up when it's coming down. And so all we need to do is sub into, uh, let's rearrange equation number one. And so we go V equals U plus AT. We're going to solve it for U. And so uh, V, I'm going to minus AT from both sides, that would give me U. And so the final velocity is zero, 
minus, now the acceleration is minus 9.8, 0 0.8, the time is 2.1. Your calculator should be the very last thing that you do. Um, a minus and a mi minus times a minus is positive. So 9.8 times 2.1 gives me 20.58 meters per second. Notice it's a positive number, so that means it's up. So he's thrown the ball upwards at 20.58 20.6 meters per second. And so if we now want to calculate how high it goes, let's go with number two. S equals ut plus half at squared. The initial velocity is up of 20.58 times the time, which is 2.1, plus half of minus 9.8 times t squared. 2.1 squared, 21.61 meters high. And that was the physics for Monday. In year seven science, we're looking at the changing temperature when you um, melt uh, some cubes of ice, and as they change from a solid to a liquid, and then as they boil. So I've got a Bunsen burner here. Um, I tell my students to put the collar halfway uh, light the match. When you've got the match burning well, then turn on the gas. There we go. And then just adjust the air collar so that you've got a nice stable flame like so. I'm going to get my mobile phone and put the stopwatch on. Uh, record, record the temperature, which is uh, pretty low. Uh, it's, it's not reading zero, it's reading five degrees Celsius. And start the stopwatch and put the timer on. Now, notice I've got a heat proof, oh, notice I've got a wire gauze to help distribute the heat. Um, I could also have safety goggles on, put some safety goggles on. And then I give my students a little whiteboard that they can actually record their results on. Uh, that way they don't, their books don't get wet, their computers don't get damaged. And they basically have to keep um, heating this and recording every 30 seconds until it's been boiling for a few minutes. Now, if that amount of ice, it will probably take about eight minutes or something like that. Then the year sevens have to plot a graph. Um, the horizontal is the uh, independent variable, which is what they chose to control. They knew they knew it was going to be time in seconds. And in this case, the dependent variable was the temperature. The temperature depended, the temperature depended on the time. And so we have to make sure that we've got equal distances here for equal times. So it was like 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270. And same here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, um, up to 100 degrees Celsius. And the students then plotted their points and basically they found that the graph went something like this, got to 100 and then it leveled off. And they then drew the line of best fit, which looked much like that. I love to use crosses to mark my points. Um, in this zone here, this is the, the zone where the ice is melting. And then once all the ice has melted, then the water starts heating up. Uh, when it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, then all the energy of the Bunsen burner is actually going into boiling the water. And so the water will then boil Monday to 7 summer. Oh, have my year 12 physics class handing their projects this week. Got some really cool motors, uh, DC motors made from fidget spinners and coils of wire. This motor was really good, ran fantastic. Uh, kids made, students made little generators, made electricity. My favourite of all was definitely this um, ammeter, which worked really, really well. Fantastic. Look at this for a DC motor. It's even got 
It's even got carbon brushes in it. Woohoo! Well done students on those projects. Good stuff. <laughs> so I'm in between classes. Um, I'm preparing for a science show here. I've got to make some wax fingers and I'm doing a 3D print for a machine thing I'm making for some spin up. Um, so I've got some wax melting. I'm going to put some water on my finger. Take that off. Mm. Ah! Ooh. It's not too bad. Ah. The first layer is always the worst. How? Ah. Okay. Then it, it's not too bad after that. <laughs> See that? I can do a bit of mass production here. Oh, the things I do. Here it comes. Ta da! Let's get some plaster of Paris into the cup. Add some water. Mix it around. It's looking good. Now I've got to get it in the finger. When it's almost full, give it a tap. Not too hard. Later on when it's gone hard, we'll melt the wax away and be left with the plaster of Paris solid finger. This is the 3D print for a um, spin chromatography machine that I'm going to attempt to make. Um, it's a three hour print though, so it'll take a while. Just had year nine science, did electricity with them. Um, so we did a bit of an introduction. So we did a round robin in the round robin. We looked at uh, power usage of drills. Um, fan, kettle, hair dryer, a record player, radio, and a hot plate. This is pretty cool. Old school record player. Here's my son. Here's my son coming up to go home with me. See how the dot, see how the drops um, hover? Evaporate. Yeah, they evaporate, but they sort of hover first. See that? Woo! Oh, that is bad. Yeah. Someone's mum, Mrs. Logic, came in and we, she does um, um, she's a marine biologist. Oh, cool! Wow. She's good at coral. Okay. Here's my daughter. Say hello. Hi. Huh. <laughs> Vicky, man, I'm a hand. I'm a hand. What? My kids love doing science as well. <laughs> Vicky, man. What? The last day. That's a wrap for the week. Um, look, I hope you've I hope you've enjoyed some of the highlights of my week as a science teacher. I uh, might see you next week. Bye for now. And start uh, melting the wax off my wax finger, look at the, the wax drip off, it's a physical change, drip 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 drip. Doesn't that melt the plaster of Paris? No, the plaster of Paris doesn't melt easy. Ooh. Ooh. As you can see, my finger's coming out. My finger is being revealed.
Oh, nice looking finger. <laughs> 